Over the course of his career in the 1990s up until the early 2000s, Russian superstar Pavel Burry was one of the most electrifying players in the game of hockey. And the speed he played the game with, coupled with a goal-scoring ability that at times was second to none, has led some people to believe that he was the most electric player the game has ever seen. The Moscow native was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in 1989 in the 6th round, 113th overall. And despite playing in just 702 NHL games, he has the 5th most points out of all players from his draft class. Nicknamed the Russian Rocket due to his innate goal-scoring ability and blazing speed, Bure in his relatively short NHL career would win the Calder Trophy in his rookie year, lead the league in goals three times, and would carry the Vancouver Canucks all the way to the Stanley Cup Final in 1994, where he would also score 16 goals in 24 playoff games, more than any other player that year. Pavel Burry was truly a must-watch for any hockey fan, and nearly every goal he scored could have been on a highlight reel. He's also the type of player that could have played in any era and really would have been a perfect fit in today's high-flying NHL. While there were certainly many other great players during Burry's time, there were really none who played quite like him, which is why I believe he was a guy ahead of his time. After a couple of stellar seasons playing in the Soviet League and some great showings at the World Juniors, Burry was more than ready to join the Canucks as a 20-year-old in the 1991-92 season. It wasn't an easy process getting Pavel onto the Canucks roster because of his contract in the Soviet League, but when it finally happened, he did not disappoint in his rookie NHL season for Vancouver. He'd end up scoring 34 goals and 60 points in just 65 games and would win the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. And he followed up in the playoffs with 6 goals and 10 points in the team's 13 games before they were taken down by the Edmonton Oilers. The next season, Burray absolutely exploded putting up an incredible 60 goals and 110 points, making the entire city of Vancouver fall in love with him and becoming one of the most exciting players in the game. Burray's Canucks will be taken down in the second round of the playoffs that year as well, this time by Wayne Gretzky's Los Angeles Kings, who went all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. The next year, the Russian Rocket put up an equally impressive 60 goals for the second straight year, but this time he was the only player in the league to score 60 besting Brett Hall's 57 with St. Louis. And after two early exits in the playoffs the last two seasons, Burry and the Canucks were ready to make a deep run, and they would do just that in 1994. Vancouver took down the Calgary Flames, Dallas Stars, and Toronto Maple Leafs in rounds 1, 2, and 3 to match up in the Stanley Cup Final with Brian Leach, Mark Messier, Mike Richter, and the New York Rangers. This was an epic series that go all the way to seven games, but the Rangers were one goal better and won their first cup in over 50 years. Even Burray's league-leading 16 playoff goals weren't enough to give the Canucks their first Stanley Cup. Pavel scored some absolutely ridiculous goals throughout this playoff run, and what he did in that postseason will likely never be forgotten for Canucks fans who got to witness or even hear about it. In 1994-95, Burray had 20 goals in 44 games during the shortened season, and the team was bounced in round two by the Chicago Blackhawks. And unfortunately, the next season, he would miss the majority of the year after suffering a major knee injury. After another disappointing season in 1996-97 for the Canucks, the following year, Pavel Burry would score 51 goals and 90 points, but the team again wasn't good enough to make playoffs. After this, Burry told Vancouver he would never play for them again, and after holding out for half the season, he would be traded to the Florida Panthers in a blockbuster deal in January of 1999. Burry only played 11 games in his first season with Florida, but he scored 13 goals and showed the Panthers a preview of what would be to come in the next two seasons, where he'd light up the NHL yet again. The 1999-2000 season might have been Burry's most impressive of his career. In a year where Yarmer Yager led the league in points with 96, Burry was second in the Art Trophy race with 94, but he led the league in goals, scoring 58, 14 more than the second highest scorer, Owen Nolan, who had 44. The Panthers overall had a strong season, but would match up with the New Jersey Devils in round one, getting swept by the eventual cup champs. Pavel Burry would again win the Rocket Richard Trophy in 2000-2001, scoring 59 goals this time around, but the Panthers would miss out on the playoffs. After playing 56 games with Florida the following season, Burry would be traded again, this time to the New York Rangers. Although he'd play 51 games over parts of two seasons with New York and put up 50 points, 
The Rangers wouldn't make playoffs with Burray, and he also dealt with more knee injuries which would end up leading to an early retirement at just 31 years old. Pavel Burry was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2012, and his jersey number 10 was retired by the Vancouver Canucks back in 2013. He is still the only Russian player in NHL history with multiple 60-goal seasons, and his 0.62 goals per game average is the 6th highest in NHL history. He scored some of the most iconic and most creative goals in the game's history, and did a lot of it during a very tough era to play in, where opposing defenders could get away with a lot of hacking and whacking. His straight line speed was unbelievable, giving him an insane amount of breakaways, which most of the time, he would score on. As you can tell, the Russian Rocket was one of the most electric players in hockey history, and it's a shame he only played just over 700 games in the NHL.